Hello and welcome everyone to the MA Design Management uh, Open Evening. Um, so Design Management is situated within the Branding, Design and Innovation program within the Design School. My name is Sarah Eckinger and I'm the course leader of this course. First, I'm going to take you through a little bit just about London Com College of Communication and UAL in general um, and why you might want to choose to be here. So. LCC, as we call it, is a diverse and world leading community of teachers, researchers. We've got lots of partnerships with industry and our whole sort of ethos is to create students that are future facing creatives um, and push design forwards, both in media and screen industries. We are, as you can imagine by the name, situated in central London, um, Elephant and Castle to be precise which is very close to Tate Modern, it's close to the Thames, it's um, within walking distance um, to a lot of really interesting places. And as such, London really becomes your classroom. Um, and this is really one of the key USPs of studying in a city like London, that you've got access to all of these wonderful museums and things. Um, well worth considering uh, when you're looking through uh, where you might want to study. LCC is part of one of the six colleges of UAL. Um, UAL is huge. It's a very diverse body of students. We've got over 18,000 students from over 130 different countries, uh, which is massive. UAL as a university is ranked second in the world for arts. Um, and I think we still, we have been that for quite a while. We still are, and we want to keep it like that. Um, with that comes a lot of global influence. Uh, and a lot of international uh, creative opportunities um, and relationships that we're building. Um, and we also have a huge range of different support services uh, that students can access. And LCC students have got access to all of, this, all of the colleges. So you can access libraries and facilities within the other five colleges as well, which are um, Central, School, um, Central St. Martins, um, London College of Fashion, um, Chelsea, Camberwell and Wimbledon, uh, which focus on fine arts and um, theatre quite a lot, um, whereas London College of Communication is very much a communications college. So the design school is where this course is located. Um, the design school is one of three schools within um, LCC. We are a very inclusive multidisciplinary community um, of educators and researchers. We have our own design school manifesto, which you can find on the website. And we've recently signed up to the climate crisis and have what we call the responsible design framework, which we guide all our th students through. So all of the students that um, work and research within LCC um, are engaged in conversations around uh, climate crisis, around social justice and the impact that design has on the bigger world. Um, because our, our, our wish is that you become valuable, responsible, creative citizens. So the course itself is called Design Management. We are a course that examines the design processes and its strategic role in business, society and culture. And we draw on a range of interdisciplinary perspectives from business and the arts. But we're not a business course. We are very much a design focused course. So it's design management with a big D. We don't see design management necessarily as a function of business. Clearly it's part of that, but it's not the sole purpose of design management. You find design management in a range of different industries. Um, it can be in culture, it can be in entertainment, it can be in education, it can be in politics. Anywhere where there's a process that needs managing, it has been designed in one way or another and it will need um, looking after uh, and, and handling in a, in a very broad holistic manner. So we look at the correlation between business, society and culture and we take a very global perspective on this. Um, we encourage students to develop design research skills so research becomes a really big part of this course. Um, we are working with you to develop your communication skills and your analytical skills. We work in small groups to enable this. So we see 
design managers very much as becoming interrogators and translators um, able to communicate to really diverse audiences from CEOs to factory floor people to any man on the street. Um, enabling you to feel confident in uh, creating strong design leadership ideas um, and really good creative design thinking skills. Um, so we work with a blend of theory and practice. Um, the approach that we take is quite collaborative and very interdisciplinary. We recruit students from a range of different, different disciplines. So we have designers, anthropologists, we have business people, we've got strategists, we've got engineers, uh, we've got economists. Um, but what links them all together is a passion for design. So you don't necessarily need to be a designer to become a good design manager, and you don't necessarily need to be a business person um, to understand management. Uh, we're trying to develop a sort of common ethos uh, where we bring all these skills together um, and students learn from each other. And that is one of the joys of this, the, this course is that it is very collaborative, it is very interdisciplinary and students gain a lot of experience from just listening to other students and their experiences. So we do a lot of sharing um, throughout the, the course. There's a lot of presentation work. I'm going to take you through a little bit the structure of the course. Um, this is also on, on the website um, if you've been there, which I suggest that you do because it has a little bit um, more of the written content. So we've got six units across the course. It's a 15-month course. We start off in term one um, with two units. One is called Design Society and Culture. The other one is called Design Research Methods and Critical Practice. The Design Society and Cultures unit is our sort of contextual unit where you really start to understand the scope of the subject and the impact that design has in the field of design. Um, and the, the, really the big contextual questions that are facing us. So we'll talk you through all of the big wicked problems out there and how design can actually help. Um, and you will be keeping a learning journal throughout that. In complement to that, we've got the design research unit, which is a slightly longer unit. It's um, 15 weeks rather than um, the standard 10 weeks. And through that, we get you to really understand what action res action research is all about, how to define a problem in order for you to select the right kind of tools to then research that and come up with a resolution to that problem. So it's very much looking at how you can critically evaluate information and apply that so that you come up with the right questions for the right problems so that you develop the right solutions. Moving on to term two, um, we progress from having gained those skills of definitions and contexts into more application through practice. And that is done through our collaborative unit and our design leadership unit, which work very well in tandem. Because within the collaborative unit, you'll be working in small teams um, on a selection of different briefs. And you will need to come up with um, your own sort of understanding of those briefs and an execution of a project. Alongside that, you are learning design leadership skills and what it takes to really lead strong design. So you're developing those management and leadership skills as well to be able to identify what good design really is all about. Then we move into term three. And for that, you are looking at Global Design Futures, which is a design speculation unit, which is very much looking at what the possibilities are moving forwards. And at the same time, you're developing your own final major project, which is entirely yours. It's linked to design management. It has a, a, a broader context, but you are developing a small scalable design intervention and you're reporting on that, you're executing that, and you're then reflecting on that. And that takes you in through to the, the fourth term um, where we then end with a big uh, collaboratively created postgraduate show. Um, which all of the postgraduate students across the design school partake in. 
So that's the basic structure of the program. The way we, we, we like to teach is by showing that this is an iterative process. So each unit builds on the previous one um, and you'll be using all the skills that you've learned from the previous units and applying that into the current unit that you're doing. So they all link up and finally you are utilizing all of that knowledge um, to really do a deep dive into what your own final measure project might be. Who studies design management? Uh, well, as I hinted at before, we have students from a whole range of different fields. Um, many are design oriented. There are many students that come from graphic design, that come from fashion design, um, as well as more the Marcoms PR um, fields of design, and then leaning in towards the more business oriented economic side of things as well. Um, but as I said, the one thing that ties them all together is this real passion for design and how design can actually improve business, improve lives, improve societies and change things. So we are shifting a little bit from this idea of human centered design to the idea of planetary centered design and what that might mean going forwards. So we are wanting students who feel that they can be those change makers um, that we so desperately need to, to lead us uh, out of the rut that we're in into a better future. We have a very global community, as I said. Um, our students are very, very international. Um, there's a little list there on the left that shows you the an example of the, the types of nationalities that we regularly have on the course. Um, so it's very, very broad. At the moment, we've got 41 students on the course. I think we've got a minimum of 20 different languages um, and as many nationalities. Um, so it is really, really diverse. You are going to be surrounded by people with different experiences, both work-wise and educationally. Um, and it's really, really interesting to hear from those experiences. But as such, Communication becomes very, very key. So the ability to speak and write English is quite important. So if you haven't done your IELTS tests yet, I suggest that you do so. Um, there is quite a lot of presentation work as well. Um, so we do encourage you to speak up and to share as much as possible. So working on that confidence is really important. Um, but having said that, we do also run um, academic support scaffolding as well as English language support. And the English language support is not a sort of SL type English language. It is very much done in collaboration with the course. So you get very course specific um, sessions with the, with the language tutor where they're going through the assignments with you and they're tailoring um, the sessions in, in English to be about the business English, to be about the terminology that we're using um, and how you can actually present your work as effectively as possible. Um, so it's not, it's not aimed solely at international students, it is aimed very much at all students um, in order to help them to write the best types of presentations and the best types of submissions that they can. And we also work in collaboration with academic support to do exactly the same, to help you express your ideas as coherently as possible. Um, I often get this question about, well, what do you become after the course? What are the careers opportunities? Um, many people comment that they don't see the job title design manager very often, and that is, that is very, very true. Um, to be a design manager is not necessarily a title, but it's a state of mind. It's the ability to manage design across a range of different fields. Um, you might be a project manager, you might be a brand manager, you might be um, a trend forecaster, you might be a researcher. In all of those aspects, some of your work will be related to design management. Um, whether you're working in-house in or as part of an agency um, or even freelancing, um, those skill sets that we you will be able to build up through the course are going to be valuable in all of those disciplines. So we've had people move into 
um, the corporate field, into the private sector. We've had people move into education, into nonprofits, into museums, uh, government policy, charity work. Um, and as I said, your titles, if, if you're interested in those, could be design manager, but you might equally be a service manager or a brand manager, a researcher, a strategist. Some people even move into journalism um, and education or future forecasting. So there's lots and lots of different opportunities um, for expanding your careers. And many students find that they actually develop their own job specialists, specialisms um, once they've left the course. Many of the students have also been very successful in setting up their own businesses. Um, so that is also something to bear in mind. Quite a few students come with existing brands that they want to redevelop or, or revamp or relaunch. And quite a few other students come with family businesses in mind. And so they use the expertise on the course to build those um, opportunities. Um, we operate a combined um, kind of curriculum. Um, so it's blended to a certain extent. There is a little bit of online support. Um, there are some tutorials and things that we do online, but most of the work, most of the actual contact hours are on site. So you could expect about 12 to 15 contact hours per week, plus English support. Um, we like to keep the cohort size to around 28, 32 students, but it has grown. Um, so we are more likely to have closer to 40 students. Um, than the 30 students. So I'm, I'm, I don't want the course to grow necessarily beyond that, uh, but it depends on recruitment. So at the moment we're sitting at 40, 42 students, um, but ideally we want to be around 32, 35 um, students. It is possible to work while studying, but it is tight. Um, Many students come with part-time jobs and don't want to give those up. So you don't necessarily have to, but you do need to manage your time quite carefully. It is four terms after all, and it is full time. Um, so you could expect to be on site three days out of the five in, in, in any given week um, with actual unit related work. Tends to be on two of those. And then we have scaffolding sessions around that, so extracurricular activities that are enriching and enhancing your um, your study. And those are quite important because they open up debates um, and they, they generate a, a stronger sense of community on the course. So it is worthwhile taking um, advantage of all of those extra opportunities that we, that we offer. Um, Yes, so uh, a form of blended uh, learning, we use quite a few different um, virtual learning environments. We, we work a lot with Padlet and Miro, um, and we do this inside the classroom as part of workshops, as well as online. Um, we operate a studio ethos, um, so there's a lot of workshopping. Um, it's very rare that you will sit in the room and listen to a very long lecture. Uh, that's not the way we do. So we will do a short talk and it will be quite interactive and there'll be workshops um, and, and activities around that. So most of your teaching sessions are going to be very interactive. Um, you will be spending a lot of time in the libraries. You will also be spending a lot of time in the specialist facilities um, that support the work that we do. Um, so the online things, typical online activities could be Lectures that are by guest speakers, for example, um, because we can bring in speakers from around the world by doing that. So you might have a lecture from a guest speaker from Brazil or from Hong Kong, um, and we will timetable that so that it fits with any, everybody's schedules. But obviously, there would be there would be um, a timing issue um, with some of those. So some of those might happen in the evening or early morning, but we do want to give you those opportunities. Equally, we can run certain tutorials online as well. Um, but as I said, most of the opportunities um, for contact time will be in person and on campus. Um, 
we are still observing um, the progress of COVID should things um, worsen again, in which case we can pivot quite easily um, and, and apply social distancing if needed. But at the moment, it looks like we're going to progress and have most things actually happening on, on campus. So this is the structure of, uh, of the course in uh, diagram form. So you can see that the first unit is 10 weeks, the second unit is 15 weeks, they run concurrently. Then in term two, you've got two concurrent units, the collaborative unit and the design leadership unit. Then you embark on your global design futures unit and the final major project unit. All of those little S's that you see there, they are submission points. So there are quite a few submission points, um, but they um, they are staggered so that you don't have too many that happen exactly at the same time. Um, and then the final major project continues, as you can see, over quite a long period. Um, so the the graduating students will be finishing the final major project as the new cohort starts. So that that autumn term is a crossover term, which means that incoming students will get a chance to see the work that the outgoing students have produced. They will be presenting their research to you and vice versa. When, if you were on the course, when, you, when it was then your time to graduate, you'll be presenting your research to the incoming cohort. That creates a really nice crossover and handover between the cohorts. The facilities that we have are quite extensive. Um, throughout LCC. So we've got 3D workshops, we've got creative technology labs, we've got a really nice revamped canteen that uh, offers vegetarian foods and um, a lot of international cuisines. We've got a cafe in, in the downstairs area. There's a college shop, there's a digital space where you can learn any software program you like pretty much. We've got lots of gallery spaces that really become activated during the year with work in progress exhibitions, final year presentations, um, exhibitions um, are running by different courses at different times of the year. So there's usually something going on in all of the gallery spaces throughout the year. We've also got a kit room where you can book any type of technical equipment that you want from cameras to laptops to um, microphones, whatever you might need to develop the work that you're doing. There's a range of library services. We've got photography studios, printing and finishing um, studios, as well as a printmaking um, and bookbinding. There's, there's masses of different facilities at your disposal. And all you need to do is book a space. And we've also got something called The Place, which is the employability space where you can bring your CVs and get tips and ideas about possible placements, um, applications for the future, visa startups, uh, ap applications and all of that sorts of things to really en enhance your abilities um, of getting employment at the end of your studies. So some of the more specialist workshops, we have a, a woodworking workshop, we've got typography and bookbinding, we've got a dark room, um, digital reprographics, we've got screen, uh, silk screen room, um, and all of these workshops are open. Um, it's an open studio access. Sometimes it's done course by course, but usually you can book an induction online um, you turn up and technicians will be there helping you to execute whatever it is that you want to experiment with. Um, there are obviously strict inductions uh, and safety procedures that you'll need to go through first, but once you've done that, um, you are free to try whatever you want. The staff on the course are also very varied. Um, so all of our lecturers are industry professionals in their own right. Um, alongside their teaching. Um, I am a sculptor as well as a course leader on the course. Um, my background is in marketing but also in theatre, so I was part of a, a, a creative or a, a collaborative um, theatre group for quite a while and have now progressed into um, more sculpture work where I also teach at Morley College. Um, my colleagues are 
a very experienced exhibition designers, future forecasters, graphic designers, um, design thinkers in terms of developing concepts and working with very, very big brands um, and, and, and a range of different companies. So we have our core team as well as a whole pool of associate lecturers. Um, and together we provide quite a quite a broad range of talents um, and we're also fairly culturally diverse as well um, so we should match our students is my belief um, collaboration is a big part of the course um, we encourage students to collaborate with each other but to also collaborate with industry practitioners and to collaborate with technicians um, so the collaborative unit, which is one that's done in the second term, I've just now come back from listening to the presentations that current students are doing. Um, and it's really uplifting to see the range of work that students come up with. I'm going to show you a few examples of student work in terms of final major projects later on in this presentation. Um, but we do give students the opportunity to work on a range of different types of briefs. So sometimes it's a live brief. Uh, with an external company. Sometimes it's internal briefs where you're working perhaps with another uh, group of students on another course. Sometimes the briefs come straight from the cultural sector or from the public sector. Um, so you're not only going to be working on commercial um, sort of business model type briefs, but that is obviously an opportunity as well. So we do encourage that entrepreneurial streaks in those of you who are interested in that. So some of the live projects um, have ranged from working with um, incubation hubs to um, audience development um, and recently a, uh, an events forum. So this was one of the examples um, from quite a few years ago. Um, they were working with a company called Digital Catapult. Um, we've also had cross-cultural, uh, cross-course, sorry, collaborations. Um, where we have worked with a range of different students uh, from different courses at the same time. Um, so at one point we were helping uh, students on the MA service design, the design for social innovation and sustainable futures, the design for art direction and the data visualization MAs, as well as BA film practice. So the design management students were engaging in different briefs from across all of these different um, different courses. So sometimes those are opportunities that open up. Um, we have recently run a sort of a school-wide uh, postgraduate project, which was research-based, which culminated also in a collaboration that was a cross-course and focused on ethics and AI. Um, and that was one of the most recent ones this year that we did. Um, some of the industry briefs have come from a range of different companies, as you can see. We worked with work, WaterAid, um, we worked with um, a small startup called Workshop, we have worked with um, a Baita, which was a, um, a, a sort of content development um, on, online facility. We've worked with councils. Uh, we've also engaged students in the RSA Design Awards. Um, and we try to encourage students to apply to as many different design awards as there are. There are lots of different opportunities and sometimes we can fund that participation as well. Um, there is a graduate residency program that is advertised throughout the postgraduate um, department which you can apply for and there's also an interesting mentor program that you can apply to and there are visiting lecturers and special guests that are brought in by the course but also by the school as well as by the university so there's announcements all around the campus for when there are different events um, and most of those events are open to all students so as i said at the beginning we are quite research focused um, we want students to use as many interdisciplinary research methods as they can to explore the trends and the impacts of design. Um, you will develop those skills as the course progresses, um, but most of you will find that 
they prove really, really useful when you start your final major projects. And then if you are interested in progressing to further research, there are opportunities to do PhDs. There are also opportunities to go much more commercial and apply for startup visas. But all of these different avenues you will find, they do rely on you having really, really good design research skills. We are also working very much at developing your making, so having a little bit of fun, trying to experiment. So design management is not just reading and writing, it's very much presenting and doing as well. We believe that making is a way of thinking and it helps you approach things in different ways. So we've had some fun with um, working with ceramics. Some of those results were visible in the collaborative projects. Um, but equally, it's not just the course-based stuff. Um, do make use of the workshop facilities, um, engage in some really rough and ready rapid prototyping, try your hand at modeling, 3D modeling, um, physical modeling, conceptual modeling. There's so many different ways of engaging with this. Um, look at the role of games. Um, we've even engaged puppetry. So I, I, I used to train as a puppeteer and I use puppetry in, as part of my teaching as well. So if you're on the course, you might get to see a few puppets as well. Um, right, now to some of the student work. So at the end of each year, we have a postgraduate show and um, every student will have their own projects um, and they all take on a very different approach. Um, I'll show you a few. So I'll take some of the more recent ones and then work backwards in time. So here's a project from last year by um, Anjana who was looking very much at helping young women in India take their um, sexual and reproductive health seriously. Um, and she found that very many were reluctant to go and see a gynecologist. So this was very much about how to go about making young women aware that they should, that it was okay, and be able to have those conversations. Another project was looking very much at um, gender inequality in Chilean primary education and trying to build up a way of getting more female role models um, and breaking that, that um, glass ceiling um, where there weren't enough um, examples of, of of women in the curriculum. And she developed an ethos for how to do that and how to engage the teachers um, in feeling comfortable bringing those examples up. Here's another one, Good Art by Bad People. Um, this was very much looking at how certain artists with bad reputations um, were sort of allowed to carry on making a lot of money at, at, at the expense of their victims. And Noah was quite upset about this. Um, and she felt that there was a need to communicate a little bit more about the, the, the different sort of conduct of, of artists um, and was researching the possibility of this idea of trigger warnings in relation to um, the work that was being produced. Sorry, I'm sitting in a corridor. Um, <laughs> apologies for the noise. Um, here is another um, example. So this student was looking at how AI could be used to enable product designers to design better products. Um, and it became a very technically engaged project uh, with a lot of very, very pragmatic uh, recommendations at the end of it. And Vincent, uh, this is a long time ago, but he was looking at cultural appropriation and the role of that, particularly in the fashion industry, um, and how we use things like Pinterest. He was looking particularly at Pinterest, but Pinterest and inter Instagram and so on, where it's really difficult to reference material so you don't really know where these things have come from and we tend to just use them and forget about the intellectual property or the copyright behind them and the impact that that then has on designs that are based on these images um, and he came up with a with an, a game that enhances um, designers awareness um, of this trend 
and what to do about it, which was quite fun. So those are some of the examples of student work. Um, and I'm quite pleased to say that graduates from the course have started up their own companies. Um, they have rejuvenated the family businesses. They've gone to work for a range of interesting uh, companies like Hermes, like Arup, Stylus. Um, we have one example of a student who won quite a number of awards during her stay here at LCC and she was very successful in her startup visa um, and is now uh, working with Microsoft. So those are just some of the some of the success stories uh, that we've had on the course. Um, so to finish off, um, there is a postgraduate hub that you become part of uh, by virtue of being an MA student. There is, as I hinted at before, there's a graduate residency program that you can apply for. Um, there are industry mentoring schemes that you can apply for as well, where you get to work alongside a mentor that will take you through the, the entirety of the course, pretty much, um, and give you advice as, as, as you go along. And to finish off, I just want to go through briefly the, ap the application process if you're interested in applying. So there are certain things that we do need to see. This is all on the website, but we do need to get your, your personal details. You do need an IELTS of 6.5 or equivalent. Um, you will need to provide us with your current or previous degree. We're looking for a 2-1. Um, we do encourage students to have a little bit of work experience. It's much easier to understand design management um, when you have some work experience. So if you, it's not that we don't take students directly from um, BA degrees, we do, but the more work that you've done alongside that, so part-time work, um, projects, you know, anything that has given you that little bit of extra life experience, and a sense of responsibility will really help you understand the themes and processes that we're talking about and enable you to take um, to just get more out of that experience. Uh, we would like to see a CV, a personal statement for why you would like to study design management, what design management means to you, and we're looking for a portfolio as well where I'd like to see six different examples of your work and a short video um, explaining um, one of those projects and the design management challenges um, that you experienced through through that project, as well as a research proposal um, for how you would conduct a research project. So there's quite a lot of stuff there as part of your application, but it enables us to see um, a range of different skills that you have and be able to choose applicants that really um, show an ability in all of these areas. Now, all of this information is up on the website um, and you've got links there. Um, so the portfolio, the more varied stuff that you show us, the better. Um, so try to show us both your, your creative flair, but also a little bit more of the sort of, perhaps the commercial work that you've done, if you've done any. Um, but rather than just putting up pretty pictures of things, explain your role in those projects, particularly if the projects were collaborative. You know, explain what it was you did and why that was important. Um, you can include uh, text as well. So you could include essays, you could include reviews, reports, um, anything that showcases where your best skills lie. Uh, can be part of this portfolio. But try to stick to no more than six projects because otherwise it becomes a very, very expansive portfolio. Okay, the study proposal, um, we want that to be about an area of interest that you have. We'd like you to define a problem um, and explain what the key research questions are. Provide us also with an overview of how you would resolve that. So what is your methodology for taking on this project? And explain the expected outcomes if you can, um, in terms of what you think you will have at the end. 
in your personal stand statement, you know, tell us why you stand out, tell us what you've done, why you want to study design management, but more particularly what design management actually means to you. Okay, so try to be imaginative here. Don't write what all of the definitions about design management are. It's much more interesting to hear how you actually view design management because it, everyone will view design management slightly differently. And how do you see design management, a degree in design management, helping you in the future of your career? That is very, very important. Okay, so there are also scholarships and funding opportunities. Um, I can't say too much about that. You will find more information on that on the website, um, but there are a whole range of different ones that you can apply to depending on whether you're a home student or an international student. And now over to some questions. Hello, yes, thank you very much, Sarah, for that um, really informative presentation. Um, uh, just to anyone, thank you very uh, who's attended. Thank you very much for coming. My name's John. I'm a member of the recruitment team here, and I'm just going to take us through some questions. Um, if you do have any, there is a little question tab on your GoToWebinar control panel, and please do write any questions down in there, and I will direct them on to Sarah. And I believe you are going to be joined as well by a student ambassador, hopefully, um, who we can also share. Uh, can share some of their experience as well. Um, yes, yes. I, I forgot to mention this. I've got I've got a student ambassador with me. Um, so if you want um, student experience um, insights, um, I'll direct you to Natasha, who'll be more than happy to answer those for you. So please, yes. any questions? We're here to help. Uh, yeah, perfect timing. Yes. So any questions? Perhaps we can start, Natasha, with you just introducing yourself a little bit as well and um yeah where you're from what you're currently studying how far you are into it and perhaps how you came to london college of communication and to this course would be fantastic lovely thank you so much john and hi sarah um, apologies if there's a little noise i think i'm also trying to find space to sort of just attend this as well uh, so a little bit about me i'm currently studying um the madm course at ual um, I actually come with a little bit of experience, but like Sarah mentioned earlier, I don't come from a pure design background. Um, I've actually been very passionate about art from a young age, but I sort of streamlined into project management. Uh, I'm originally from India and um, given my experience uh, over the course of few years, I got introduced to design management as a concept and design thinking specifically. Uh, and that sort of got me a little more curious as to how design thinking could actually uh, sort of help the social development sector because that's mainly where my practice has been. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, take up my master's in design management. And right now we are currently just finishing our second term. It's been uh, an amazing roller coaster of a ride. Uh, so yeah, so I'm hoping there are some questions and I'd be more than happy to sort of share that. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Natasha. Yeah, that, um, I can imagine it's been a roller coaster ride, so I'm glad to hear it. Um, so we have had a question come through. Um, and guys, yeah, any more particularly uh, for ambassador experience, please do send them in. Um, the first one, if in our graduation, our first language was English, is IELTS necessary to take? Um, usually not if you actually have a British degree or an English speaking degree, then that should suffice as evidence that you have the required IELTS. Um, admissions might ask you, um, but I would be quite happy with accepting an appropriate English level uh, through, th th through that qualification. I would Absolutely. check with admissions though, yeah? Absolutely. As just to add to that, um, I think maybe if you want a um, uh, country specific um, response, send your details and your inquiry to that general inquiries email, which is on there, and they will be able to get back to you specifically looking at the qualifications you have existing and be able to advise you advise you accordingly. Um, so I'm sure that will be no problem at all. Um, a little question for Natasha. Um, how much have you collaborated with other students on the course? 
Um, okay, wow. I think it was from day one because um, so our current cohort has a mix of people from uh, Asia. We have students from uh, Greece. We have students from um, the US. So I think on day one itself, we had activities that sort of helped us break the ice. And since then, term one and term two have had a lot of um, subjects wherein we we also sort of encouraged to self-reflect a lot, but at the same time we get to learn. So I don't think it's just course specific in terms of the units that Sarah mentioned, but also on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis when we are in class and we're attending class, uh, it's constant activities, it's constant um, discussions in, a, in various groups. And we're encouraged to sort of mix up our groups because uh, I think it's very normal for us to sort of gather together in familiar groups, but then we're encouraged to sort of break that and uh, the lecturer sort of, uh, encourage that as well as part of the course so a lot of room to collaborate uh, the current unit we just finished is the collaborative unit where um, we were asked we were given different briefs we were given the option to sort of work on different briefs based on our uh, personal interests and also trying to learn from each other so i think uh, like sarah mentioned we just finished uh, our presentations today and we got to see what each group has sort of learned from each other but also what they were able to deliver over the course of this term so definitely a lot of room to collaborate Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and another question uh, for Sarah. When you have a background in filmmaking, is design management a master's that could facilitate development in projects related to the film industry as well? Uh, I would say so, yes. It depends really where you see yourself going, where, where, where your ambitions are. If you are interested in um, artistic directing, creative directorships, uh, producer jobs, then definitely having design management skills would um, be valuable for that kind of direction. Um, I'm not sure design management would necessarily help you become a better filmmaker as such. It's not, we, we are not teaching design skills per se. We're not design specific or, or discipline specific. So we're looking at um, the sort of the wider understanding of how design thinking um, can help a range of different situations um, but yeah if you're looking at you know um, forwarding your career in a more sort of um, strategic direction um, through tv and film then definitely fabulous thank you very much and uh, do you feel that this degree would provide practical and applicable skills for someone looking to work in careers such as event management or experiential marketing absolutely um i'm actually going to direct this question back to natasha who's just watched uh, and been part of these the collaborative unit which was some of these projects were very much about events management. So Natasha, would you like to share a little bit what you what you got from the experience today in terms of the presentations on this on this issue? Definitely, sir. So um, like I mentioned before, uh, there is a lot of room to collaborate. And as part of one of the briefs for our collaborative unit, uh, it was to actually work on a live project, uh, which involved a lot of event management, um, experiential design, spatial design. So we had three um, groups actually come up and present their ideas for how um, this particular client can sort of enhance their, um, what would you say, event, right? But I think more than that, it was also, each of these groups had people from different skill sets. We had uh, people who were architects, people who had uh, experience in uh, spatial design, people who had experience in um, uh, event management and things like that. And so there was a lot of room to collaborate on that project itself. So I think various backgrounds does add on to your experience. It, you don't have to specifically have done design management as a course in your undergrad or a design specific course itself, because we had people who come from finance backgrounds as well as part of these groups, because uh, it's looked at as an uh, entire holistic uh, approach, not just specific to what your strengths are. Uh, but yeah, it was amazing to watch three different groups come up with brilliant ideas um, and the kind of effort put in in just a span of a few, I think two months that we had uh, to come up with this. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. That was a fantastic answer. <laughs> um, what role does culture play in the design management course? Well, 
design sits within culture. So design exists in a cultural space. Um, and because we have an international group of students, uh, culture becomes quite important, both from a culture shock perspective, as well from a sort of um, cultural uh, environments perspective. And design has a big role to play within culture. So cultural questions are sort of where we begin. Um, so we look very much at inclusivity, at diversity, um, at social justice, at the big sort of big, big questions that we're facing. And a lot of those relate to different cultures as well as um, creative cultures. Um, and I think the way we, we, we see design management is really looking at, well, what is the strategic role of design within these big questions? So culture with a big C and design with a big D. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, a question for Natasha. Um, how did you find moving to London and where are you currently living? Is it in student halls? Right. So um, I think London's definitely been more than what I expected because uh, you hear a lot from people you look up online. And I did my own research before coming here, tried to find out as many people uh, that I know who have been in London. But uh, trust me when I say your experience is your own. And uh, as much as you try to compare it, you can never sort of really understand what it's like unless you live it yourself. Uh, but that being said, I don't live in student hall. I actually stay with uh, four other flatmates who are students. So we, um, and I think that way UAL was really helpful because even if you're not able to get into UAL halls, they will direct you to websites and they will walk you through processes on how to sort of uh, set up your living uh, aspects uh, as an international student. So there are actually guidebooks, they, uh, you can chat with them online, you can drop them emails and uh, they're very sort of, uh, I would say, communicative that way. So that sort of re-established a little bit of faith, knowing that, okay, I'm going into a new place where I don't know anyone. Uh, at the same time, I know that, okay, there is some sort of guidance and some sort of support on the side. Uh, but I think it's been a lovely experience. Uh, I'm still getting used to the weather because I'm used to a very different weather. And it is currently snowing outside. So, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, things to look forward to in London. <laughs> I love that. Yes, it is snowing a lot <laughs> today. Um, in regards to the portfolio and research proposal components of the application, what advice would you give to applicants who are not coming from a design related background? Right, good question. Um, so, with the portfolio, if we start with that, show if you can your your interest in design okay so yes include uh, project work from um, your previous educational experience draw on some of the work experience that you might have had so you might have worked uh, in an area that wasn't necessarily design specific but aspects of it were related to design so show your management skills perhaps show your understanding of branding show your collaborative efforts. Um, if you look at any project and it has had a designed outcome, explain perhaps the process that um, you went through to arrive at that outcome. Even if you didn't necessarily produce that design, you would have had a role in its creation, even if you were collaborati collaborating, say, with designers. Um, and then in your in your personal statement, you would explain sort of why it is that you feel design management is the right space for you, okay? Your, um, your project proposal would need to have a design focus of some sort. So you would need to think of a design intervention um, that you are interested in looking into. So defining a problem that is design related um, but that could be looking, it could be the design of work, it could be the design of um, services, it could be the design of, you know, it, it could be quite conceptual. It doesn't need to be design as a, as a, as a aesthetic outcome, shall we say. So look at design very, very broadly. 
Um, and what I'm more interested is in seeing the kind of problems that you want to resolve that and your explanation of how you see design having an impact on that, okay, and the methodology that you would choose to um, apply in order to investigate that. Um, whether the outcome then actually is a design or is a strategy, that remains to be seen. Um, and in looking at that application, if that is something that then gets developed into a final major project, we would have a discussion with you about that and then see how we can actually narrow your focus and make it more design specific. Um, but you've got a whole year to get there. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. And another question for uh, Natasha, and a good question, a very simple question. What do you enjoy most so far in the course? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I love that question. I think it's the diversity and this was something that struck me from day one. The fact that I get to uh, mingle and learn from different people. There are people with more experience than me, people with different experiences than me, people with lesser experience but different cultural experiences. And I think um, I've always enjoyed interacting with people, right? But um, I think the course sort of gives you an option to uh, meet people from various backgrounds but you all come with the same intent and that's something that sort of uh, has stood out for me definitely. Fabulous, thank you. Um, and another one for you quickly, Natasha. Um, do you are you already developing some ideas on what you would like to do next? Right. So um, I think I'm still in the discovering phase. Uh, one thing that the course really helps with is the fact that we are encouraged to uh, explore a lot. So. Uh, while I did submit my research proposal, I think I'm still learning about various methods. Um, in terms of after the course, I think I would definitely like to sort of um, apologize. There's, uh, there's a little bit of noise behind me, right? Uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, but post this, I would definitely like to continue in the career that I chose uh, in social development, but I think sort of figure out how design management would fit into that and um, maybe uh, figure out better ways to design uh, social impact and social innovation is something that I'm looking at post this course. Lovely, thank you. It's a really interesting answer. Um, and yeah, excited for what comes next. Um, a we, couple yeah, more questions. We are actually getting a lot of applicants who are very interested in that social development space, and that is really lovely to see. So if you do have projects that have more of a social angle to them, and that's a space that you want to explore, um, then by all means, this this is a space where you can actually do that. Fabulous, um, thank you. Uh, if, if after the first two terms, we want to amend our applications project proposal based on what we're learning and exposed to, do we have the opportunity and are we allowed to change our final product idea? Your um, study proposal for the application is for the application, that is to get through the door. Whether that becomes your final major project proposal or not is immaterial, really. It's great to have an idea, but you are by it's not set in stone at all. And you have two terms to uh, come to grips with new ideas, uh, new experiences. You might decide to do a completely different project from the one that you applied to. Or you might decide that actually that original idea is something that you're still interested but you are rewriting it and you're perfecting it and you're using everything that you've learned. So absolutely, the final major project doesn't start until the third term and you've got eight weeks then to develop a proposal. That is the proposal that you will then be held to, not the one that you submit in your application. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, that is all of the questions and I think that's on the dot on time. Um, so thank you both very, very much for sharing your experiences and for an excellent presentation.